What's up everyone, welcome back to the channel, my name is Elias, I'm a photographer located in Athens, Greece and in this video we're going to review the new series sniper series lenses over here. We have the 56mm f1.2, we have the 33mm f1.2 and we also have the 23mm 1.2 which is filming me right now on top of my Nikon ZFC. So you can probably guess that I tested all these lenses out with my Nikon ZFC over here. It took me a while to produce this review for you because I really wanted to test them out fully and in real world scenarios. I did a lot of street photography with these lenses during the night and also during the day and I also did a photo shoot with two Audi S3 cars and also one Polo GTI on the back. I think that's what it's called. I'm not the best person to remember car names, so excuse me for that. So yes, you can probably guess I have a lot of real world experience with these lenses. I didn't want it to make a review just by taking photos and videos of my mom's plants like many other reviews do. I think that you have to use the lenses in real world in order to decide if they're actually good or not how they perform in these kind of real world scenarios. But anyways, that's enough with the rant. I also made sure to test the sharpness of all these lenses in various f-stops so we can see where these lenses perform the best and the worst. And also I made sure to test the autofocus during photo mode and also during video mode. So we're going to have a lot to talk about in this video, but this is the most honest and in-depth review that I can possibly do for three lenses in one video. It took me three, four, almost five pages of full notes to write everything down so yeah this is going to be a lot of fun for me so these lenses are APS-C lenses only if you use them on a full frame camera you will get a huge vignetting effect they come out for sony e-mount for fujifilm x-mount and for nikon z-mount I'm sorry Canon users but your company sucks and they don't care about their consumers especially the beginners and the enthusiasts but let's save the Canon roast for another video but obviously the main selling point of these lenses is the 1.2 aperture with autofocus at a really ridiculous price these lenses are between 299 and 350 you can get them around these prices i have a link down below on the description where you can check these lenses out and you can also use my code elias5 in order to get an even better price keep in mind that this video is not sponsored by siri they didn't pay me anything they just sent me the lenses and yeah they don't get to see this video before it's out i can say whatever i want so i'm going to be as always really honest and i'm going to talk about the good things and also the flaws about these lenses so you know what you're going to pay but on the side note i just want to say a huge thank you to siri because it's really heartwarming that a company like them trusted a small creator like me in order to review their gears i think it's awesome that some companies trust smaller creators like me and like other people out there and care about what they have to say and respect their work so yeah let's continue so let's firstly talk about the really important build quality so let's take off that lens cap over here i really love the lens caps in these lenses they're really easy to use and they have these clicks so this one sticks uh, in place the whole body is made of some kind of metallic ceramic something like that it's really sturdy it is made really really well especially at this price point the hood is also really sturdy we have the beautiful uh, blue line over here on the lenses and we also have a really nice texture on the manual focus ring which turns really really smooth over here and the texture provides us with a better grip while we are manual focusing which is really important because I think these lenses will be really popular for video makers. Other than that we don't have anything else on the outside of the lenses. On the back over here if we take off the cap we have a USB-C port over here for future firmware updates and we have a nice metallic back. We don't have a plastic back which is really nice at this price point. And lastly the one thing that I really like about the build quality of these lenses is that all of them have the same filter size so all of these have a 58 millimeter filter size so if you have 58 millimeter filters you can put one filter in all of your lenses so yeah that's great okay now that we have the build quality out of our way let's talk about the all important image quality so we'll show you many samples of all my street photography sessions and most importantly from my car photo shoot i will also show you a few clips so you can see the video quality with these lenses and what you can create with these lenses and i think that it's better for me to stop talking and for you to enjoy the nice samples that i have gathered while testing these bad boys out take something to drink take something to eat and enjoy the photography samples Go 
that you saw that these lenses are actually capable of producing impressive images let's also take a quick look of a few reels which are made with these lenses i'm sorry about the vertical format of the video but i will show you more horizontal video clips down the road As you can see it doesn't matter what lenses you are using as long as you know what you're doing you can produce nice videos and nice photographs with the gear that you have because in real world scenarios it's not just about the sharpness but since we touched the sharpness subject let's quickly jump into Lightroom and take a look about the sharpness test that I made for these lenses so let's start off with the 23 millimeter f 1.2 and in the middle of the image you can see that at f 1.2 we have a rather soft image but let me tell you that this is the sharpest lens at f1.2 out of the three in my opinion at f1.4 you can see that the image quality is getting better at f1.8 the lens is already pretty good and at f2.8 the lens is really sharp at f4 at f5.6 and at f8 the image quality is really sharp and we get a lot of resolution and detail at f11 the image is still really sharp but the fraction is starting to soften our image slightly. The corners of the 23mm f1.2 at f1.2 are again soft. At f1.4 they continue to be soft but slightly better. At f1.8 they are still soft. I don't see any major improvements. But finally at f2.8 the image starts to clear up. At f4 and at f5.6 we have much better corners and at f8 we have the sharpest corners possible 
with lots of resolution and at f11 we still have a sharp image but due to diffraction we have a slightly softer image frame than what we had at f8 so if you want to use this lens and have the full image frame with lots of resolution you have to stop down at f8 in my opinion about the 33 millimeter f 1.2 we can see that at the middle of the image at f1.2 we have again a soft image frame at f1.2 we see small improvements at f1.8 we get a little bit better of an image frame and at f2.8 we finally have a sharp image at f4 the image becomes really sharp again at f5.6 it's the same story a really sharp image and at f8 we get a tiny more improvement and we have a razor sharp image at f11 again we finally start to see the fraction and the image softens a little bit out but it's still really sharp so about the corners of the 33 millimeter they actually look better at f1.2 than the corners of the 23 millimeter as you can see we have a good image at f1.2 on the corners at f1.4 and at f1.8 it's basically the same story at f4 and at f5.6 the corners are really sharp and at f8 we get an even larger boost and we have a razor sharp image at f11 the corners are still sharp but the fraction starts to kick in and make them just a tiny bit softer so again we have the same situation with the 23 millimeter if you want to have the full image frame really really sharp then you have to shoot at f8 so about the 56 millimeter in the middle you can see that at f1.2 it's rather soft i think the 56 millimeter at f1.2 is the softer out of the three lenses at f1.4 we see a tiny improvement at f1.8 we see again a minor improvement and at f2.8 the image frame is finally sharp at f4 and at f5.6 again we have a really sharp image and at f8 we have a razor sharp image but this time at f11 we continue to see a really sharp image and it seems like the fraction starts to hit off at higher apertures about the corners of the 56 millimeter at f1.2 they're rather soft at f1.4 and at f1.8 they get minor improvements but they're still soft at f2.8 they are becoming slightly better and finally at f4 we can call them sharp at f5.6 they are becoming a little bit sharper and i think that's the most resolution that we get out of the corners of the 56 millimeter because at f8 and at f11 i barely can see any difference so this is a really interesting performance obviously all of these three lenses at f1.2 they are rather soft but at this point in time there is no other 23 millimeter 33 millimeter and 56 millimeter with autofocus at this price point which can give us access at this beautiful f-stop shooting at f1.2 even though the images are a little bit soft the look that i get out of these it's something else man i can get cleaner images in terms of noise because i can use a smaller iso and that look that bouquet i'm starting to fall in love with these lenses personally my favorite out of the three is the 23 millimeter because even at f1.2 you can capture a clear image and i think these photos over here look gorgeous at that f-stop but the bouquet and the compression that we can get out of the 33 millimeter and out of the 56 millimeter there's something different dude i don't know how to describe it but you have to use something like that in order to feel the difference and personally i don't really care about the image quality on the corners because i'm not going to use these lenses for let's say landscape or something like that if i want to use them for landscape i will use them at f8 on a tripod and get the whole image frame really sharp but let's say i'm using the 56 millimeter at f1.2 at f1.4 1.8 even at f2.8 i don't care about the corner sharpness because it's going to be out of focus anyways so will i use these lenses on let's say a wedding ceremony i would for sure use the 23 millimeter and the 33 millimeter because i think that they are optically acceptable for these kind of situations i already use the bildrox 23 millimeter f1.4 for my weddings so i think that i can maybe replace the Vildrox with the Siri 23mm in one of my future ceremonies but personally I wouldn't use the 56mm at f1.2 in something like that. If sharpness is really important to you and if you are getting paid in order to produce a really sharp image then I think that the 56mm is not something that I personally will choose. I can easily recommend all of these three lenses for video work because if you're doing video high sharpness is not 
a top priority. I think that the f1.2 image that we can get out of these lenses is something that filmmakers will really appreciate. And yes, I would use all of these three lenses for, let's say, wedding videos, where, like I said, sharpness is not the first thing that matters to everyone. Personally, I will continue using all of these lenses and create much more content with all of these. I really like using them for street photography and I also want to make a few creative portrait sessions with these bad boys over here because the look that you can get at f1.2 is something really desirable. And since we are talking about the look that these lenses produce, let's quickly talk about the bouquet that these lenses produce. And Personally, I don't really care about the bouquet that a lens produces. I don't care if it produces the cat's eye effect or if the bouquet is really round. All I can see in these images is that the bouquet is beautiful. So yeah, the bouquet subject is really easy for me. Like it has beautiful bouquet and that's about it. So let's also mention the chromatic aberration that these lenses might have. And yeah, as you can probably guess at this price point and especially at f1.2, we have a little bit of chromatic aberration, but out of all these images that you guys saw, I never had an issue in order to remove the chromatic aberration. It was really easy to do in Lightroom. And as the days progress and, and I'm starting to take a look at even more filmmaking work, chromatic aberration is something really desirable in the filmmaking uh, community. And I don't know why, but chromatic aberration gives out a little bit more character to your image frame. It's quite funny that filmmakers actually tend to search for these imperfections because you can get that 3D look on your image. You can get that nice feel in your image where your image doesn't look all that tech savvy. It doesn't look clinically perfect. So if you are a filmmaker and you want to use your crop sensor camera like your Sony FX30 for example and you want to create really nice videos but with lenses that have character on them, I think these lenses could really help you out creating these stories for you. Okay, now that we have the image quality out of the way, let's also quickly talk about the autofocus. And as you can see in these samples over here, these lenses perform really great. The 23mm got 9 out of the 11 in sharp and in focus. The 33mm got 17 out of 20 frames sharp and in focus and the 56 millimeter got 16 out of the 16 frames that i got in focus and as you can see in video mode even at f 1.2 these lenses perform really well they capture the eye right away basically they perform like native lenses so i'm really happy about the autofocus performance and I can just imagine how well these lenses will work on a body with better autofocus system like the FX30 from Sony. As a reminder, I'm filming this YouTube video with a 23mm f1.2 and as you can see, it tracks my eye perfectly even at f1.2. So this is real life and yeah, the autofocus system is great for video and I quite like it to be honest. So let's get to the point. Are these lenses worth it? So first things first, we have to check out the competition. And I think the direct competitors are the Viltrox Trio and the Sigma Trio. The other trios have an f-stop on their lenses, which opens up until f1.4. So these lenses have an advantage because they can get up to f1.2. So if you really like that f1.2 compression that you get out of these lenses, and you can live with the lack of sharpness that these lenses have at f1.2, then I think that these lenses are the right choice. But if you need clinical sharpness in your images and in your videos, then I think that these lenses are not the choice for you. And speaking of the competition, I'm planning to release a video where I'm going to be testing the 23mm over here, which I think is the sharpest out of the three, against the Viltrox 23mm f1.4 and against the Nikon 24mm f1.4. 1.7 if I remember it correctly. So I really love the Nikon and the Viltrox lens and I really want to see how the Siri lens over here will go up against these two lenses. And I'm also going to test out the 56mm over here with another 50mm f1.2. Basically I'm talking about the TT Artisan 50mm f1.2. So yeah, these are going to be really nice comparisons because, because these lenses are really popular in APS-C formats. Alright you guys, I think this is where I'm going to end the video. I think I covered almost everything that you have to know about these lenses. If you have any more questions, let me know down below and I will get to work in order to answer to you guys. If you're new here and you like photography content, video content, weddings, uh, portrait shoots, travel photography, 
street photography and all that kind of stuff we're doing all of that in this channel over here so if you enjoy that type of content then maybe consider subscribing and maybe even liking this video this really helps out with the algorithm and yeah if you want to grab one of these lenses then maybe check out my link down in the description and use my code in order to get an even better deal let me know your opinions down below in the comments about if you like these lenses or if not if you're going to grab one or not and let me also know what else you want me to do with these kind of lenses i'm planning on doing a lot of street photography povs and also many portrait shoots but i would also love to hear your opinion and maybe i get inspired and do something that you guys like even more okay i think that's all that i have for you guys to say today see you next time take care peace